Hello and welcome to this Bits Box unboxing video. This is the second part of our two part series uh, where we're looking at the new heavy carriers for Halo Fleet Battles and today we're going to be looking at the CAS Assault Carrier for the Covenant. This is by Spartan Games from their Halo Fleet Battles game. Personally this is the one I was looking forward to the most. I'm a little bit of a Covenant fanboy. So let's crack this open and have a look. So, the Covenant. Similar to the Punic, we get the two separate bases. One nice solid resin, the other one clear acrylic. Um, the clear acrylic is probably going to be my option to go with. Though I will say, I'm not sure this is going to show on camera. Actually, I think it is there. There are little scoring patterns there. Now, you're going to be putting a formation overlay on top of this, so you won't notice it. But if you are going to aim to display it without the formation overlay as a display piece, that might throw a spanner in the works. So, having just noticed that, I'd say the resin base seems to be a little bit better, Nick, especially with a light sanding to smooth off that. Um, if you use this display piece, I'd say use the resin, but as a gaming piece, I quite like the acrylic. And if you're displaying it with the overlay on it, you won't notice the scratches anyway. On top of that, 10 more dice. This ship has a little bit more DACA than the Punic does, so you'll definitely need those. So we'll just pop them there. Now, we'll pop this to one side, and we'll get to the meat of it, the ship itself. So you get three bags for it. Oop, holding onto that screw there. Now, we've got the rear section there. We've got the Brown, I guess you call this, the, the neck of it, as it were. And then we have the, the front of it, which I think is actually called the prow. I'm terrible at naval terms. Now, one thing I will say about this is it only comes in four parts, so it's probably the easiest to assemble model I've seen for, well, almost anything. Oh, I should probably not drop that. So you can see here, we can get it pretty much built. And yeah, like I said, this one's a personal favourite of mine. I just love the design of it. Uh, Trying to hold it in front of the camera. Get a nice side profile. It does look quite brutal, yet elegant in a way. Uh, the underside. We've got the fourth bit here, which simply inserts into there. Like so. So, it doesn't sit in there, obviously. You need glue, but... Four bits, absolutely idiot-proof assembly. I can't see you having any problems with that. Again, the finish of it is beautiful. The detail on the ship, very nice. Very nicely done, Spartan Games. Apparently, they based this model on the um, CAS done by Blur Studios. Let's get a nice close-up there. Uh, so you can see, Blur Studios did the Halo 2 Anniversary um, Edition, which had a remake for all the Covenant ship models with extremely high detail. Apparently, according to uh, Spartan, had a little bit of trouble rendering the, <laughs> the rendering those models into the resin, but I'd say they've done a very good job. Now, it's also worth noting the I should have probably kept the Punic out for a size comparison. The Punic is about so big by comparison when we've compared it. So the CAS is a little bit bigger as well. I'll just pop that there for now. We'll have a look who else is in the box. So, as well as that we get our medium ship spruce. We get one CCS battle cruiser and six SDV Corvettes. So, pretty standard. A nice supplement to your list. Uh, main problem with this is again there is no supported version for the CAS so uh, I suppose you could have a cruiser and three pairs of Corvettes but you wouldn't really be able to do a fleet out of the box for this not a particularly good one at least um, but at the same time Spartans seem to be able to have this be a supplement to an existing fleet it'd be like buying a Bane Blade as your starting model for 40k or a Colossal for War Machine or something similar like that. 
you get the idea. On top of that, we get four formation bases for said sprue. So, a nice supplement to your fleet on top of the big, chunky ship. Then we've got the pack of cards and such here. If I just crack this open. That we've got assembly instructions. And as I showed you, uh, oh, well, they put that part on first. I suppose it does make sense. The assembly instructions really, you know, you don't need a degree from Ikea for this. Piece of cake. Uh, one thing to bear in mind with these ships is they are certain size pegs measured out for them. So bear that in mind when you assemble it because otherwise you might have a slanted uh, assault carrier. Again, there's nothing in there. On top of that, we've got the rules card. Uh, the other side is the Punic, as we showed earlier. So, we've got four mid and aft. You can see here it weighs in at 825 points. Now, off the bat, a lot of people have been debating, is this, you know, is this anywhere near as good as the Punic? Um, especially given the Punic costs 675 points. This is a whole 150 points cheaper. Uh, sorry, this one is a whole 150 points more expensive. On top of that, uh, we'll just go with special rules first. It gets some nice rules. Um, you may take one free zealot for each section, so that gives you some pretty nasty boarding ability. On top of that, um, it gives you um, it gives you some defensive ability if you get boarded. On top of your ridiculous security detail rating, it means that anything short of a couple of spawns isn't going to do much to this ship in terms of boarding. Now, um, one thing that isn't actually clarified on this that I've just noticed is it doesn't say whether the zealots give a victory point when killed, which could get quite uh, could get quite painful if they start dying on mass along with the ship if you get cornered by your SC fleet. On top of that, you can take six of your Seraph interceptor wings rather than five. So those are your fighters. You can take more fighters. That's quite handy. Six might be overkill. I'd say if it was five or six bombers, that'd be better. Because then the bombers are quite underpowered. I feel in Halo, they don't really dish out much damage, especially Covenant ones. You only get four in maximum per wing, so you can only do eight dice of damage, which isn't much, especially against bigger stuff. On top of that, limited resources. Um, that room is basically the same as the Punic. It means that you can only take one single Covenant Assault Carrier, the CAS, for every full 1250 points being played. Oh sorry, it can be included in the fleet. So you don't have to take 1250 points and then the carrier, you can have it in the 1250 points. But still, no taking this to small points games. I would like it actually if, uh, if Games Workshop were to introduce stuff like this to 40k. Uh, one of my main grievances is Lords of War and very small games. But that's another game for another time. I'll stop complaining about that. So, uh, first off, is it as good as the Punic? I'd say it is better. It is worth its points increase. If you look, the armor is better. The point defense is comparable. It gets more hangers, more boarding craft. I would personally rate the Plasma Lance or Beam as being better than the Supermax. That Beam mode, when you get from 12 inches, which it will be tough because it is quite slow and big, but people may be trying to board you, so you can counterattack against that. 15 dice on free targets means you can sweep through UNSC squadrons and wipe out frigates. You can probably kill or seriously maim clusters of cruisers. Uh, that is some pretty nasty firepower. And 10 plasma torpedoes, once you get in short range with them, they will definitely outclass missiles. The hangars, you get slightly more hangars, slightly more boarding craft. Your security detail is very healthy. Also worth noting is that you get defense arrays, not titanium armor which means that you always get it. You always get those defensive dice, not like the UNSC where the first point of damage removes titanium armor because the hull is melted. On top of that, better armor on the damage tracks. Movement is only an inch less, though the Punic also gets hard burns, so it can get to an effect of seven inches if it doesn't turn. All right, we'll look at the midsection, which is definitely beefier. Defense array of nine. Uh, 
10 hangers, 5 boarding craft, 8 security detail. This, I, we played a game, the 4 section, when under concentrate far from a Punic and um, 2 marathon cruisers and a whole bunch of frigates. Uh, just about managed to kill the 4 section. The mid section did not take a single point of damage the entire game. 9 defense array dice, 8 point defense dice. There are times where, against missiles, I was rolling more dice to defend than he was to attack. On top of a armor track that, you know, is pretty much equivalent to the ORS cruiser on its own. <coughs> I think maybe even the support ORS is just about that much. And you got a lot of port and starboard dice. <coughs> I mean, those plasma torpedoes, they're quite nice at long range. Uh, the plasma cannons still aren't bad, that's 15 dice, that's enough to pepper some frigates. And then the aft section, which you get a little bit more firepower than the um, than the Punic, you get two weapons you can shoot out of the aft. Though they can only fire directly aft. Um, compared to the, I think it was 10, maybe 15 missiles that the Punic puts out back. And on top of that, we're still getting a very solid defense raise, 8, point defense 7. We're still armor track of 1087. This is a very, very durable ship. The point of the CAS assault carrier was to be able to effectively beat down a fleet by itself, get through the fleet to the enemy planet, then go and invade the planet more or less by itself. So this does seem like a ship that can do that. Um, now, <laughs> as far as killing one goes, because there is the danger of having such a big expensive ship like this being too overpowered or not overpowered as such for its points cost but too powerful to really deal with uh, it's worth noting that a lot of the far power is that beam everything else is just more DACA that you would receive from any collection of corvettes or covenant ships but that beam, that beam is the scary part now if you take down the front section not only do you remove you know, those hangars, boarding craft, and all these weapons from the front section, it effectively gets wrecked as if it was, it was eh, as if it was its own separate ship. On top of that, any other sections take a minus one to their firepower. So at long range, the Covenant uh, typically deal with minus one firepower because of their uh, plasma weapons. So they're at minus two, they become, they, they become cork shooters. If you're shooting at a target that has elusive, like, frigates, you can't fire at all because you're at minus three firepower, which means you don't get to roll the dice. So that's one way you can take out. Another way, uh, we found that when I hit one in an asteroid field, uh, it could only move three inches a turn because it has to move half speed. So if you get one and try and corner it to go through terrain, that does massively impact. Because it's got this long long base it's going to take quite a few turns to move through the terrain especially at three inches a turn either that it's going to have to move fast and risk damage um, which to be fair given its durability it could actually try and you know it could probably survive a decent flight flight through terrain but if you take out the aft section you uh you destroy its ability to move and it can only move two inches which trust me this thing while still big and scary, only has really short range guns in limited arcs aside from that big gun up the front. So if you take down its mobility, all you have to worry about is that big gun. If you take down the front section, you don't really have to worry about much other than uh, some guns that have significantly less firepower. So uh, that's, the, that's the rules for it. Still, I'm very happy with it personally. It is pretty scary to field and to face off against. On top of that, we've got our uh, formation base overlays. Again, like the Punic. These are in three different sections for fore, mid, and aft, with different damage tracks, hangar ratings, and all that. They're effectively three ships glued into one. Um, much like the Punic as well, we've got the standard CAS assault carrier. We also have the Solemn Penance, which is if you've played Halo 2, that's the ship that Regret takes to the surface of Earth um, and you are trying to work your way across uh, New Mombasa to get to in Halo 2 and capture the Prophet. You then follow it to the second Halo, Delta Halo. 
So uh, that would be quite interesting. That does imply maybe that we're getting a Prophet of Regret character and he can take his own personal CAS Assault carrier. It might be... I don't know, I might get some special rules. There's not really much to go by on this either. There's no additional uh, damage track or hangers or anything really. No signs that it's going to have any drastic difference in defensive capabilities, but... It might get access to special rules, we don't know. Maybe uh, maybe the whole crew is zealots because they're protecting a major profit. We don't know. Hopefully we find out soon. So, top of that, usual token sheets. We got zealots, we got seras, bombers, all sorts. Uh, you're probably drowning in these by now. Uh, <laughs> I know I am. Uh, but again, they're kind of handy, especially if there's three zealots on this. Really, you need those. And, ooh, this guy with uh, the Zaitan Watanri. If you could get within 12 inches and board with all sections on a target and use his ability to give each zealot plus two dice in the attack, that could, that could overwhelm pretty much any UNSC ship that the far power hasn't managed to. On top of that, for the sprue scene earlier, there's our... Corvettes and our CCS inserts. Pretty standard. Not really much to discuss there. And again, here's the same old card that's been in every Covenant box for your CCSs, your Corvettes, all sorts. One thing I have seen um, might be worth uh, Spartan looking into is I have seen online, people have cut out around the, um, where you see the grey outline there. People have cut out the box inside the grey outline. And it turns out to be roughly the size of a magic card, so it fits in magic card sleeves. And you can then, through careful cutting, give yourself a series of reference cards to use rather than these big stack cards. Which, depending on your personal preference, you might find more convenient. And then, lastly, We've got our build sheet, that's got the ORS on that side, oh, with part of the CCS, no that is the ORS. Uh, ah yeah, the CCS is so simple, it just has one diagram. So that's how you build your CCS cruisers and your Corvettes, because it's the same sheet, it also has all the UNSC instructions inside. But yeah, so that's the... Covenant Assault Carrier. Ooh. <laughs> I almost lost it. Again, personally I've been looking forward to this ship for a while. Um, I think I'll be trying a few more games to see how it goes. You might see the uh, Assault Carrier is mine. The Punic shown earlier belongs to Wayne, so we are hoping to do a bat rep. Facing them off against each other, seeing how they do. Um, and seeing which one emerges victorious? Uh, well, now we've got one of these. We just have to hope they finally release that Long Night of Solace model they showed us at Gen Con, eh? Although that might bankrupt my bank account.